this is uh, Chris with Canterbury Trails. I'm starting to hang the drywall in the house. We've got all the insulation in, well, most of it anyway, except for the room that we still have some electrical work to do. So uh, I hung a couple of boards uh, of drywall last week just to experiment and see how it went. I uh, learned a few things here. Uh, the uh, summary version is I didn't do this right. Uh, first of all, I, hung the, I put the bottom board on first. It's flush against the floor. It's probably not going to be good. It's going to draw moisture up into the board. Um, and then I hung the board. I thought I, my idea was to rest this board on top of this one. But you can see now, because it was flush against the floor, I've got a big gap at the top that I'm going to have to fill with mud. I'm going to have to tape that and fill it with mud, and it's going to it's not going to look great at the top of the ceiling. I'm not going to have a perfectly square edge. So what I really want was to get a, a perfectly square edge. So I watched some videos, kind of did some research. Um, you can also see that I nailed these in. I had some problem with the drywall here. One of the things that I'm up against is that the the wall itself, all of the studs, they're they're older, but uh, and they were milled the old-fashioned way so they're not all straight um, so I have some that bow out um, so when I set the drywall against it I have to I'm working with a bowed piece of drywall and you can see already since, just since I left I've got some nails that popped <laughs> one right there and uh, this is a little bit different story. We had a problem lifting this board uh, by myself and I accidentally nudged it against the ground and crumbled some of the drywall out so it's not very strong here. So the question I was asking myself was do I take this down and try to redo it? What I now know is the right way. Uh, I think I'm going to wait and see how the rest of this room goes and see if I get a rhythm. If it seems like I, I get a rhythm and things are easier then I may rehang take these down, tear them out, and maybe use them for scraps and rehang two, two new pieces here. But So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to experiment. I have my son with me who helped me carry these boards in last time, uh, but he's pretty young, so um, if I can do this myself, uh, I'm going to. Basically by myself, unless my son helps me, I can't move these boards. So I just got this simple panel carrier drywall lifter, and um, I tried it out, and I so I did exactly what this dude is doing on the uh, on the thing here. I paid close attention to his <laughs> posture and how he's holding the board, and it worked like a charm. So I got this board in here by myself without dropping it, nudging it, breaking any parts of the drywall off. So I'm going to go get some additional boards. I'm going to bring them in here because I'm going to have to make cuts as I go. The other thing I got to help make cuts, which we didn't have last time, you saw my big mess up down there at the bottom, um, and I missed, I made some holes where I didn't mean to because I missed the studs. This T-square, it's a drywall T-square, sets on top of the board of drywall, it goes the full length of the drywall, and uh, when I lay the board in place where I want it, I can mark where the studs are with a pencil so that after I get the, the board up I know where to screw and then at the ends too I, I can mark where my cuts need to be. It's just going to give me a straight line, just a simple mark with a pencil. This thing is what I needed last time. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I think we're in good shape for this project this time. I'm going to try it out. I'm going to see if I can do all of this by myself. Um, uh, with the tools that we got and we'll see how it goes.
while I was uh, doing the tack strips, which I'll spare you the agony of since you've watched so many videos of me removing tack strips, um, I found this. So in the sewing room, there's been carpet, which was different from the other carpet, that's laid down and on top. It was laid down on linoleum, which this looks like what the kitchen linoleum was, only this linoleum's nice and still bright green and shiny gold. So that must have been laid down when they did the kitchen, maybe a remnant. And then underneath the linoleum, which doesn't appear to be put down with any adhesive, of course I haven't gotten to the middle of the room, is unstained wood. So the same wood plank flooring goes underneath here, but it hasn't been stained. It's like they had no intention of leaving it wood in there. They had a plan. And so I don't see any more carpet tacks because I've just got a corner that I'm looking at because the kids are still occupying this room. So this will probably be one of the last things we do here. Um, we won't be getting this carpet out of here until we can get this big massive pile anyway. So, so it looks to me like, if I'm lucky, there's no adhesive on this linoleum. They just cut the little, because this room's a little square. So they just cut the linoleum, laid it down in there. And then later on at some point, they just cut some carpet and stuck it on top of the linoleum. And you can see how old the linoleum is. It just, it just rips apart like it's paper. So um, if I'm lucky, this corner that I can't get to is the last carpet strip in this house, if I'm lucky. We will see. Um, like I said, I can't get, we got all a bunch of piled furniture and stuff in this little room. The kids are like squashed in there like sardines. Um, so that, if I have carpet strips, that little room is my last thing with that corner. If I don't, if I got real lucky, that corner might be it. Hallelujah. Anyway, so I got the carpet strips off here and I'm fixing to sweep that up and I'll be done with carpet strips until we get this a growing pile of crap out of here and we get the electrician back to um, check out the wiring in the corner where we intend to put our wood stove. 